Hello everyone, it's been one year since Zack Snyder's Justice League arrived, or at least on March 18th. I got to see it early. A year ago, I entered the Hero Among Us sweepstakes, and like many fans chosen through that sweepstakes, I got to see Justice League early on March 13th. And it was quite something, not only as a DC Comics fan, as a fan of these characters, as a Zack Snyder fan, but as a person who believed in the Snyder Cut when no one else did, like many of you out there, it was quite something seeing this film. And you know, I grew up with the Super Friends, I grew up with Batman, Superman films, Superman on television, DC Comics, and the Justice League cartoon. And I didn't think it would be until I was like 50 years old that a Justice League movie would come out let alone a great one. 2017 arrived, and like many of you, I was hurt and just kind of dumbfounded of what I just saw. It left me speechless in a way I haven't felt since Batman and Robin back in 1997. And deep down, I knew something was wrong. I'm like, there was a better movie in that theatrical film. That wasn't Zack Snyder despite many people saying it was. I had my own relatives try to tell me that that was Zack Snyder, and I'm like, no, that did not look like a film made by the guy who not only did Manistor or BVS, but the man who did 300 and Watchmen. That was not his movie. And people were like, the Snyder Cut, it doesn't exist. Get over it, you're delusional, all this stuff. And I would just say, yeah? Well, where did all the footage from the first two trailers go? Rewatch the first two trailers and you see most of that footage in Zack Snyder's Justice League from last year. And it was quite a year last year. I had the honor of being featured on IGN Fan Fest with other fans and Zack Snyder answered one of my questions. That was such a surreal moment. Something very small, but it meant the world to me. And I entered the sweepstakes and I shared who was a hero in my family. Around, I guess, March 11th last year, I got an email saying I was chosen, and I got an early screener. It had my email <laughs> watermarked all over it. I saw it through a laptop. Not a conventional way, but still, I was seeing a movie I thought I would never see, and it was just so surreal. Ever since that announcement in May of 2020, I was just waiting for this movie, the DC fandom trailer with Hallelujah. All the way to now, and Zack Snyder had his own personal introduction into the film. And it must have been filmed around the same time that the 4K BVS introduction was filmed because it was like in the same location, that theater. And we kick off with the Snyder Cut, all glorious four hours of it. And I never got to see a film early, but like many of you out there, I lost count with how many times I've seen this film. The Snyder Cut, <laughs> it's I, I can't believe it's like a physical, tangible object now. Something that we all were just dreaming of a possibility, you know. And I almost felt like giving up when this was announced. And it came along. And boy, was it so much better than what they did before. And as much as I would have liked this version, I think it would have been compromised. And despite all the negative stuff, despite all the tragedy and just bad stuff that happened throughout the production process and then after the release of Justice League, or Justice League I would like to call it, this is probably the best version of the film. This is probably the best case scenario. Even without a Green Lantern, we have Martian Manhunter, we have Darkseid actually mentioned and featured in this film. Superman in the black and silver suit. Batman is no longer a guy who makes jokes like Tony Stark. No, he's the Dark Knight. He becomes a leader. Wonder Woman. It was a breath of fresh air seeing the Wonder Woman from the first film return after what happened in Justice League and in 1984. Even though I love 1984, this is a Wonder Woman I love. The warrior that's fierce yet has a gentle side to her, that caring nurture inside as a leader with Bruce. And who could forget Ray Fisher as Cyborg? Ray Fisher, I could understand why he was mad. Like his whole arc was just butchered and gutted. We get to see everyone's story properly fleshed out. There's humor in here that's actually funnier than what was in the theatrical. And I know it may feel too long for some people. That's a fact. But for me, this was the fastest four hours, like ever. Like 
I love this. This is a quintessential DC movie, and I know there's some movies that might be better as a movie, but this is my favorite, and I think probably the best DC Comics film. Like, seriously. As far as, like, DC Comics, translating what's shown in the comics and graphic novels and translating that onto screen, it is a quintessential DC film. And I would love for it to continue in some form or fashion. And it was just quite something seeing this unfold celebrating it and just processing it who could forget junkie xl's iconic score i love the tracks at the speed of force make your own future make your own past it's all right now there's so many memorable lines here faith alfred faith i love that line where alfred is just like why are you doing this it's like your guilt has become your reason and it's just like don't wave the red cape if you can't bring down the charging bull and he's like you do when this red cape charges back it's like, I don't care how many demons and how many hells he's fought. He's never fought us, not us united. Like that's Batman and Wonder Woman. You have that opening bank robbery scene that's completely different, but I love it with the schoolgirl there. And she's like, can I be like you when I grow up? And she's like, you can be anything you want to be. If that isn't the most perfect encapsulation of Wonder Woman, then I don't know what is. This film has so many moments. William Dafoe is back as Volko. It enhanced all the other movies. I can watch BVS again because now it has a proper sequel and conclusion in some way. We of course have the added scene of the nightmare of future, but we finally get to have Jared Leto and Batman meet face to face. I love that. <laughs> I made her a promise that when I killed you, and make no mistake, I will fucking kill you. That I'll do it slowly. I love that. Oh my God. <laughs> such an iconic scene with these two people finally meeting face to face. We didn't even get that in Suicide Squad. And I'm hoping this inspires an extended cut of Batman Forever and maybe Ayer, David Ayer's original cut of the Suicide Squad, the Ayer cut. This isn't about being a re-edit. This was never a re-edit. This was the original version that was never released. And we gotta remember to respect filmmakers and creators. No matter what happens, respect a director's vision, a creator's vision, the story they're trying to tell. Don't play sides of like, this isn't my Batman or my Superman, this isn't my DC, and I'm like, no. What was the point of release the Snyder Cut if we're not gonna support filmmakers and their visions? And that goes, that comes from the studio as well. Like, don't make James Wan edit another cut of like Aquaman. Let the directors have their vision, show it. Don't try to like, make the same mistakes that you did in the past. And I was quite excited about this film last year. I reviewed it. I butchered Kieran Hines' name. I called him Searing Hines or something. I knew it was Kieran Hines, and then I was like, Searing Hines? I don't know. I was half asleep. I was too excited. I messed up, and then my camera, the lighting was going like light and dark, and my skin tone was messed up. I didn't think that many people were going to watch that video. I probably would have reshot it, did correct pronunciation and lighting. But it exploded, and luckily many of you discovered this channel, and I thank you for subscribing, but I was just a person who was excited to see the Snyder Cut, you know? After having so many people just condescend you and just in a glib way be like, it doesn't exist, there's no such thing, oh yeah, you Snyder bro and all this stuff, it's like, no, it does exist. And you just prove that you do not know jack shit, and you just throw stuff on the wall to see what sticks, you know? You don't know anything. It's like people talk, talk about the film industry. It's like, oh, you don't know anything about the film industry. You're just some guy talking on a YouTube channel. It's like, yeah, well, at least I know what an aspect ratio is and why it's in that format. When you're complaining about it, it looking like a VHS, like full screen or something. And I would love for this to be released theatrically. I unfortunately did not get a chance to go to the charity screenings, but it was quite a year of Justice League. And despite what the media says about like toxic fandoms and stuff, it wasn't really about that. It was about having Zack Snyder, after the tragedy of him losing his daughter and getting his film taken away, having his vision restored. And it was quite something to see that, in addition to his new film, Army of the Dead, which rocked on Netflix. And I hope, like director's cuts of the past, that this ushers a new wave of cinema where you explore different cuts or different avenues of what may have been or what can be, what could have been. And that you don't try to rob a director of his vision. Move forward. I know there's some stuff they have to do fiscally for the studio, some stuff to make it profitable, but there's a way to do that while also still having a director's vision intact, having a director 
have his dignity intact. And I don't know what's going to happen with the Discovery merger. I hope they restore the Snyderverse as far as Justice League 2 and 3 go. But I would be okay with even Henry Cavill coming back. You know, I know Ben Affleck doesn't want to do it, so that's I respect that. But, like, you can still have Ray Fisher. You can still have Ezra Miller, Henry Cavill. You don't have to erase everything in the past to create what's new. And I know some of it might have to do more with money than anything, but, like... Restoring the Snyderverse doesn't mean boycott all the new DC films. It means you can do what you were going to plan on doing, but you can also have this along with it. Or better yet, have it as its own standalone thing, just like Robert Pattinson's The Batman, which was an excellent film. Just do that. And, you know, you had a lot of hit pieces after this was released. It kind of pits us fans down, but... I feel blessed to be in a timeline where there's now a great Justice League movie. Like it's here. Like people said it didn't exist, and I don't mean to rub it in, but you know what? Santa Claus, he's not around. The Easter Bunny's not around, but you know what does exist? The Snyder Cut. It's here. And for better or worse, no matter what happens, even if it never gets restored, at least we have this, along with BVS and Man of Steel, and a year later, it still is one of the most epic superhero comic book films I've ever seen. As Kevin Smith once said, Zack Snyder films in splash pages. It's like seeing a graphic novel come to life. Like he did with Watchmen in 300, this is like seeing a Justice League cartoon or comic come to life. And I just want to see what the future holds. It would be such a missed opportunity if they do not continue or at least conclude this in one or two more films. You can see videos of me talking about it in my favorite moments. I'll have a playlist down in the comments, but it's quite a gift a year later. And I have to say, it's my favorite film from last year, and definitely one of my favorite films ever. <laughs> favorite DC Comics films, period. Like, seriously, it's in my top five. I absolutely love Zack Snyder's Justice League. And it just reminds you why we all fell in love with these characters in the first place. And they're kind of like epic, godlike quality, you know. Zack Snyder has fun with these characters, but he never makes fun of them. And that's one thing that I sorely miss in some other adaptations that I see lately. And I will forever cherish this film, but also cherish the time in the community that was found through the Snyder Cup movement. Even though you have a lot of toxicity lately, a lot of late adopters, like people... It's nice to meet other people who share what you love, and you don't have to worry about hating or loving that. I leave that to you. Don't mess with other people's opinions. Let them love or hate what they're going to love or hate, but it's something when you find a community, get together, whether it's for American Suicide Prevention, Cancer Society. It's nice seeing people come together for a good cause and just sharing together what they love, and that's something special in this world of ours. And... uh yeah, I love all the Superman moments. Superman Rising Part 2 and Monument Destroyer are like my favorite tracks as well. That soundtrack is like my workout <laughs> playlist, and I, I listen to that soundtrack almost every day, seriously. But um, this film is something special. As a little boy, I never thought I'd see a film like this. And definitely after 2017, I didn't think I would see Justice League. I can't believe it's already been a year since I saw this film, but you know what? I'm just happy and blessed to be in this timeline where everything's right now. The past, present, future, it's all here. Yeah, anyway, that's my brief recollection of this film a year later. Anyone out there who's seen Zack Snyder's Justice League, let me know your memories of first seeing it, your thoughts, your thoughts on Justice League, just the whole process. Let me know some of your favorite moments and what you love most about this movie. Just comment down below and share in the love of this film a year later. Now, I know for many of you out there, y'all probably didn't see it till it came out on HBO Max around March 18th. I'm just making this video early because it's a year since I've seen it. So for this week, share comments down below. Share your love for the Snyder Cut. And hopefully, hashtag, may they restore the Snyderverse. I would love that. But, uh, yeah. I don't want any hate out there. Any people that are talking bad to other oh, one of my subscribers or talking bad about the Snyder Cut can go away. Share your love out there. We have enough hatred in this world. We need more love. So share your memories and thoughts on this. 
In the meantime, you can subscribe for more videos and check out these other Justice League related videos for more content. I'll also have a bunch more down in the comments below in a playlist with all the links for McFarlane unboxings and different top 10 moments and stuff, as well as a spoiler discussion I had with Movie Minders and with uh, Joey's Movie Blog. You can check out their channel. It was quite something talking to other fans about this film and just sharing love for this epic tour de force of a movie. Anyway, I think I'm going to watch Zack Snyder's Justice League for the thousandth time already. Till next time, everyone. May y'all stay safe and healthy out there. God bless.